Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Kristen with Monarch Plans and today I'm going to walk through what I've created so far for my A5 rings planner. I mentioned it in my plan with me from earlier this week that I was really contemplating getting into a rings type planner mainly because I am really looking for kind of like an all-in-one space to keep all of the different things that I want to keep track of. And that's kind of things other than my weekly plans, if that makes sense. I'm using the Erin Condren uh, Focus Teacher Planner as my weekly kind of overall planner. And that's a planner where I end up mostly keeping those planners into the future um, to look back on. They're almost like a, a planner and almost like a memory keeper type of thing, if that makes sense. I don't include pictures or anything, but I say that because I just remember my mom used to have those like tiny, um, like pocket calendar things that she would keep in her purse and she would write everything down in there. And it was just appointments. It was just things that happened, things that she did, um, good things that happened, even bad things that happened. And she would write everything down and she kept those, her entire life. So she had a ton of them um, throughout her life and she kept them in her bedside table. And I remember one day she let me look at them and just look through them. And it was amazing as her daughter looking through like what her life was like when she didn't even have kids, when she was in college, that sort of stuff. So I just really, really loved that. And it wasn't even like memories. It was just appointments and stuff like that. I thought it was so interesting. So that is kind of my main reason when I say it's almost like a memory keeper is it's not like a scrapbook. It doesn't have pictures. It just shows what my life is like on the day to day and week to week basis in case anyone ends up caring later in life. So not going to say that my kids are going to really care about what my life was like before them or anything like that. But in case they are interested or in case I want to look back on things, I just feel like that is something I would like to do. So I am using that planner for that purpose. So just kind of like an overview, appointments, work stuff, um, things for my shop, all of that. It's kind of like my overview for the week, but this will have a lot more specific things that I'm tracking in terms of like wellness, shop stuff, um, some like daily plans, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get into this um, right now. One thing I wanted to mention, and like I said, I mentioned this in my plan with me, is I am not fully committed to the idea of my A5 planner and A5 planner yet. So what I wanted to do is I didn't want to be buying things for this planner. I think where I've gotten in trouble in the past is I have kind of like thought of a new idea for a planner I wanted and I just like went for it. I spent a lot of money on it. I like dove in and then a month and a half later I find I'm not even using it. So I didn't want to do that because as a lot of you know, some of these A5 folios can be really, really expensive. I'm talking like the Notique brand. There's like um, Filofax, Cloth and Paper, Levenger, all of that stuff. Those are all really expensive um, when you're getting like their leather folios and stuff like that, which is what I'd be interested in. And I'm not willing to drop like a hundred plus dollars on a leather A5 folio at this point. So what I wanted to do, and this I think is kind of mostly doable for a lot of people who want to try this, is you can either get like a really cheap A5 binder, whether it be rings or just like a folio, so you can put a disc planner in there on Amazon. Um, I didn't get this from Amazon. This is an Erin Condren A5 planner um, that I got last year when I um, when the new planners were released, I had to buy this so I could do the correct sizing for my shop. So I already had this A5 planner, but I have seen a lot of really great A5 planner, um, options on Amazon. So I will link, um, one of those down below if you're interested. One that I've seen some other people use, I'm not, I don't remember who off the top of my head, but I have had it on my like list, my planner list on Amazon for a while because I am, ordering it to try it soon, but um, I think it's just a good option when you're just kind of dabbling in this system and don't know for sure if it's like the thing you want to go with. 
So that also being said is I didn't want to go through and like buy a bunch of inserts and dashboards and tabs and all that kind of stuff until I'm kind of sure that that is what I want to do and this is what I want to go with. So you're going to see that my setup now is like a hodgepodge of different things that I had around my office, um, different like A5 size things, petite notebooks or petite planners from Erin Condren, um, notepads from Erin Condren. I have my Moxie Life Daily, which I got the spiral bound Moxie Life Daily, but I kind of cut that up, which I hate saying that because it was really expensive but I cut that up and put the pages in here. There's just a lot of different things in here. So I am just trying it out and then eventually I'll either make my own inserts or I'll buy some um, and then invest in some dashboards. But let me just get started and show you what is in here and kind of talk through how I want to set this up and what I even want in here. So like I said, this is the Camel Folio from Erin Condren. It is an A5 size. I have the, those there, but that is it for right now. I don't really know what else I'll put in here, whether or not it's gonna be like business cards for my shop. I have no idea, but there's a couple different um, little areas that you can fit things in here. So that's what's kind of nice about this folio is there's a little bit of storage here in the front section. And then if we kind of take a look here, I don't know if I mentioned, I am interested in ring planners. I have tried discs in the past and I just cannot find a disc system that I really, really like. So I am looking at rings. Um, one thing about this planner is I feel like the rings have started kind of separating already and I really haven't even used this. Um, so I might be looking at investing in a different folio sometime sooner rather than later just because I don't know how well these are going to hold up but anyways I um, just have a bunch of different things in here you can see pretty thick with papers I got this all set up and kind of printed everything over the past few days and got it all put in here so um, I have things clipped together with this like ollie clip this little magnetic thing so let me just put that to the side really quickly but like I mentioned, I don't have any like dividers, tabs, dashboards, decorative things, nothing like that yet. I am purely going to start using this and I actually need to like cut some of these tabs off that were in the Moxie Life. But what I think I'm going to do is just for the time being, I'm going to use these little tabs from Avery. Um, I have these little like metallic gold ones and I will just put them on like the edges of pages to mark where my different sections start. My other thought is I might take scrapbook paper that I have, cut it to size and then laminate it because I have a laminator and then use those as dashboards. So while I'm kind of getting things started and kind of seeing what works and what doesn't, I think I'm just gonna go pretty cheap with that. I mean, scrap paper is like a couple bucks and then I already have the laminator, so won't need to spend a whole lot of money because honestly some of the dashboards and stuff on Etsy can get a little expensive. I think some of them are like seven bucks or like eight bucks plus shipping for just like a sheet that you would put in to kind of divide things. So I don't know. I'm trying to be economical with this because again, I don't want to like invest a hundred bucks in this and then it not work at all for me. So Let's get started with going through what I even have in here and then anything that I need to add. So this first section is all of my goal setting stuff for um, Moxie Life. And I, like I mentioned, had the A5 daily. So these were already sized um, to be this size. And so I have all of my annual goal setting from the front of the planner here. And that makes it so I don't have to like redo this. I'll redo the compass assessment um, quarterly, but I don't have to go through and like redo all of my goals and my brain maps and everything every single time I start a new quarterly planner. So I will just move this section um, or keep this section in here as I progress through the year and then add my little quarterly um, reassessments and everything as time goes on. So that is goal setting right there. And then, like I mentioned, I have these quarterly assessment pages in here that I will keep. And then as the year goes on, I would just add the next quarterly assessment and the next quarterly assessment. So that is there. Then I need to trim this off because this isn't for February. I just wanted to have um, both sides of my 
uh, monthly calendar here, but I have the daily pages from my A5 daily Moxie Life here with the weekly overview. So I have a full month's worth in here. Um, and I, again, just had these in um, the coil bound planner and I just cut them off or cut them out, cut the little spiral like confetti stuff off of it and then put these in here. It does cut off some of the little check boxes, but that doesn't really bother me at all. So I'm not too worried about that. And then I also really like that it has my weekly actions and everything in here as well. So I can be sure to um, update that as well as the reflections. So I am liking that this is all kind of in one place with all my other stuff because when I had it in the coil bound, it was separate from all my other planners. So wanted this to all be in one. The other thing that I'm thinking about doing is I have mentioned in the past that I'm doing Moxie Life and I have my Power Sheets planner. I think I'll tear my Power Sheets out and they are eight and a half by 11, like a normal letter size. So I might fold it in half and then hole punch the top of it and have it in here as well. So I'll have all my goal setting in one place. I think that's what I'm going to do, but I haven't done that yet. So after my Moxie Life Planner, what I would like to do is include my weekly or a weekly planner. And what I did is I ordered a Plum Paper Vertical Priorities Planner. I really like that layout because it's pretty much like a good overview of things. I think that will be just a very functional layout for me. Um, so I will still be planning in my teacher planner, but that will have a really nice weekly layout that really I know works for me. I think that the weekly um, like overview here in the Moxie Life is a pretty good place, but I still haven't figured out how this is going to work for me. Um, and I've experimented with a few things, but I don't really know how best to use this in terms of just like this blank box versus the vertical priorities has like sections and habit trackers and all that kind of stuff. So it just feels like it's a lot more functional for what I'm needing. So I ordered that planner. I'll probably just keep a month in here at a time, but then I also included some add-ons, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. Um, which I will then include in this planner as well. So it was kind of nice. I was able to get the weeklies and then the add-ons that I needed from Plum Paper. Um, the next section in here, so after the dailies, I'll probably include my weekly pages or I'll put the weeklies in front of the dailies. I'm not quite sure yet, but I want all of my like planner pages to be in one section together. So that will be kind of how I do things. I'm also looking to add a yearly overview page and I might take that from one of my Erin Condren planners, A5 planners, or um, I think my Plum Paper planners have the same thing. So I just want like that 12 boxes layout so I can do future planning if I need to. After my daily and weekly layouts, like I mentioned, I took some of these checklist pages from one of my Erin Condren Petite Planners. And so this is just like the checkbox Petite Planner. That's all it has is just these checkbox pages. And my plan is to use these for uh, content planning and for shop planning. So in terms of content planning, I wanted to put the name of the video or the name of like the post that I want to do on this side and then the different pieces of the like content creation process in terms of like prepping, filming, um, editing, uh, thumbnail picture, stuff like that in here. And then for my shop, I'm able to use this to keep track of the design process because it is a big, big, big process when you're doing three to five different kits every single month in terms of like looking at patterns, creating patterns, creating designs, updating everything, making sure everything looks good, and then doing listings. So this whole section will be devoted to that, to both the content creation and my shop design stuff. Um, so I am excited that I have this, um, this many in here. I might add more. I have definitely more of these to include if I need to. So that is an option, but I think I'll just start with this many. 
The other thing I might do is add just some dot grid pages in here as well. I always hear something that I want to try or include or whatever. Um, I would like a place to jot that down for my shop. So I'll probably put some dot grid pages in here. I did buy some extra dot grid pages with the plum paper planner that I ordered. So those will be here soon um, and I'll probably put them in this section. The other thing I did just in the meantime until I actually buy some dashboards is I took the covers um, off of some of the petite planners that I have. And so this was the checklist petite planner cover and I just hole punched it and it's a fun little kind of like divider thing. I might put, like I mentioned, one of these like sticky tabs on here and use this as one of the dividers to kind of take me to the next section. Um, but really, I don't really know where I'll use this, but I just thought it was kind of like a fun design and a fun saying. The next section I have in here is my budget section from the Budget Mom. It's the Budget by Paycheck system, and I had the boxed set from her, which is an A5 size, and it just comes with each individual month in a different booklet. Um, so I had that already and I decided to cut one of the um, months and I just started with March and I'm just going to include one month at a time. Maybe I'll include like the, the calendar from the next month if I want to just for like some forward planning for the next month. Um, but essentially I just included all of the pages from that month. So it's able, I'm able to do my paycheck tracking um, and then some of my expense tracking, which is back here. So you'll see expense trackers and everything like that. So I'm excited to have this in one place because like I mentioned, my weekly planner is the teacher planner and then I would have had like an A5 coiled planner for my Moxie Life stuff. If I wanted to use the vertical priorities, that's a different planner. If I wanted to do this like checklist, that's a different planner. And then this itself is another little booklet. And so that's already like four or five different, more like five or six different planners. And so having this in here makes it easy to just kind of like flip between my daily plan, flipping to my expense tracker to make sure everything's tracked in here, flipping to the rest of the sections, make sure they're tracked every day all of that. So already that was kind of my motivation was I really just wanted things in the same place. So that is my budget section and I need to see if there's like any other trackers or something that I want to include in here in terms of like debt payoff stuff, those little coloring pages. I don't know. I just need to explore kind of what I want to even include in my budget section, but I think that this is a good place to start. Um, this next section is super, super random. I think it's just going to go with the back of my planner, but I took these from, um, I think it's called uh, Novel Companion from Little Inklings Designs. It's a book planner, and I wanted to include this list here because a lot of times I am like on the go or I'm on Facebook or I'm like scrolling through Instagram or something and I see books that I really, really want to either buy or that I already have that I want to read. And so I wanted to have a place to write that down really quickly. So I took these from my little Inklings design um, coiled planner. So I have these and then I also ordered one of the add-ons for my plum paper is the media add-on and that is... Um, something that I have in one of my planners, but I think it's seven by nine. So I wanted the A5 size. So it has a spot to show like what books you've read. I think what movies, podcasts, stuff like that you've kind of consumed. And I wanted to have that because I always like to keep track of that stuff just to know like what books I am reading or I have read. Um, make sure, first of all, I don't buy duplicates because I've done that in the past, but it's just kind of fun to look back on at the end of the year. I think I'm going to move this to the back though because it's kind of like in the hierarchy of things like the least important thing in my planner uh, but it just kind of fell here for the time being. This next section is really devoted to like health and wellness stuff. So I have a list pad from Erin Condren that is this grocery list um, here. So I wanted to include these so I could quickly write a list or mark down a list um, in my planner as I'm doing my meal planning. I'm trying to decide whether or not I would just do like my meal planning on the back here or whether or not I actually want a separate like grid or calendar thing so I could plan out my meals. But 
that's one thing I'm trying to kind of figure out, but I think I might have a solution for that. I don't quite know, but I wanted to include these in here so I can easily just kind of create and keep track of the list of things that I need to buy. And then that means that I can either like plan out a week, keep the list, and then just like keep it in here. And if I want to repeat that same meal plan for the week, I already have the list of all the things I need. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking for that. These are a little bit bigger than A5. They kind of like stick out the side a little bit, but that's okay with me. Um, I also, again, cut one of the um, covers off of a petite planner. This was the wellness planner and I really liked the design here, but I actually really liked that it had a pocket. So I wanted to cut that off and then I can put whatever, I just happen to leave the stickers in it right now. Um, but I wanted to have this little fun pocket with the cute design on the back. I'm trying to get this to fit. There we go. And then I took one month worth out of the Erin Condren wellness log. So I have the petite planner here with some of like check-ins and goals and everything like that. And then movement for the week and this week's food log. So I am debating on whether or not maybe to do my meal planning here and then create the list um, or have this actually be a log. And that'll make sense in just a few minutes because I have an area where I will be tracking my food um, in the next section. So I think this will be like forward planning and then the next section will be actual tracking. Um, but I really do want to be tracking my movement and kind of putting in what workouts I want to do. And then this is a nice place to kind of keep track of habits and stuff. But I am not quite sure if I'm going to be keeping this in here, you know, for the time for the future, but I wanted to include it just for now because it has a couple different things that I like. So I might at some point kind of combine this with like the next section, which you'll see in just a second. Um, but we will see. But I only have a month's worth of these in here and then I will just add another month when the time comes. Um, let's see. Okay. And then this section here, a pretty thick section, but it is very specific um, because it is from a membership program that I am part of and it is called No BS and it's kind of like a, it's like a weight loss course, but it's really just kind of something I'm using to change my relationship with food as well as get a little bit healthier. So I have all the different pages from the planner um, that they provide in that program and it includes monthly plans, stats tracking, habit trackers, um, weekly plans and assessments. Let me just skip around. And then every single day, I'll be planning out and writing down my meals and everything. So if you're not familiar with the No BS program, um, it's just something I really enjoy and there's a lot of good content that goes along with it. But one of the main kind of like guidelines and I don't want to say rules, but it is pretty much a rule that you plan out what you're going to eat and kind of like plan out your day ahead of time every single day. Um, and that means like planning out your meals, planning out like what your goals are, all of that stuff. And then at the end of the day or the next morning, you assess how you did and then you can decide whether or not you need to make any changes and all that. So that is important to me. Um, and it's important that I have it kind of readily available because it is something that I have to do every single day. And I also mentioned that I don't know if I'll be using the grid from the wellness planner as a food log or not because I'll actually be tracking my food here. So I don't really know um, if it's necessary to have in, bo in both places, but I just kind of need to figure out like what the flow looks like. So that's something that might change, but I definitely am wanting to include this um, planner and this like food wellness section in my planner because it is something that I have to do every single day and I want to have it readily available with all my other plans. So 
there is that. And like I mentioned at the back, I think what I'll do is I'll include like that media log and all that kind of stuff at the back. And then other than that, um, I also got cleaning pages with my plum paper planner. And so I'm going to put a section for like home stuff and that will be cleaning related, maintenance related, all of that kind of stuff. But I just haven't gotten my, pa my plum paper planner with that information in it yet. And then probably just some extra pages for notes at the very end. And then I think that's it. Um, so you kind of have seen what I want to include, but it's just kind of chaotic right now because it's just a hodgepodge of all these different pages and there's no real good way of dividing things. Um, it also is kind of crazy because everything is like a different size. So I don't really know if this is something that will be sustainable because I don't really just like my brain doesn't like that everything is different sized. There's like different colors of white, which kind of bothers me too. You can kind of see like these are different colors, all of that. So at some point, I think I'll probably just include or use like a daily planner like this, which I can get, you know, like a inserts and then maybe I'll create my own inserts for all the rest of them. I don't really know, but I'll probably change this around at some point, but I'm just experimenting and seeing what works. Um, for the time being though, until I kind of have things narrowed down, I'm just including also a little soft bound notebook here, just kind of tucked back here in case I need to take notes on things. Um, I can use this if I decide to go into the office or have like a meeting, I'll just take this whole thing. Um, and then I can just use my little notepad so then I don't have to take like multiple planners or books or anything like that. Um, and then other than that, I'm just going to find like a good pen that I like, which I tend to just really like, oops, these like Pilot G2 things. That's pretty much the last thing is I'll just have my little pen here. And then there's this pocket back here that is really helpful in case you want to add like a notepad of some type. Um, so for example, I have this notepad here that I got a while ago and you can just slip it in here so I if I have like a notepad that I really want to include which I have a bunch of them I'll just include it back here so you can just slide it back there and it's the perfect size to include um, and then you just have like a little tear off pad um, instead of having a soft bound I might just put like a notepad like an actual notepad in here for notes so then it's not too thick or bulky but for the time being I'll just include my little soft bound so other than that, that is it for this little A5 thing. I think the biggest like takeaway is that you can start kind of seeing if it's something you'd be interested in for not a huge investment for the most part. I'll say, especially for an A5 size planner, the A5 size is essentially just half of a sheet of computer paper. So if you don't really have any inserts or you don't have like all of these different things sometimes the inserts themselves if you just want to print them yourself are pretty cheap um, on Etsy and you can find them just find ones that you would like and you can buy the digital file and print them on your own paper that's how I was able to print all of these planner pages was I just took the letter size and I said I wanted two per page and I printed it like that and then just cut them in half and punched them. I will also link the punch that I got because it's worked for me really well so far. It was on Amazon. So um, that is something that I would grab. And other than that, I'll also link um, the folio um, and the folio option from Amazon. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure I remember exactly what I need to um, link. And then other than that, if you want to buy A5 sized paper, which is a thing that's pre-punched, um, that's also on Amazon. So I've had that in my cart for a while if I needed to use that. So I'll also link that as well. But um, other than that, I think that this is it. I'll try to come back when I have things like more defined and more decorated and actually have dashboards and everything in here um, to show you exactly what I ended up with. But so far, I think this is pretty much 
what I'm needing and wanting. And obviously things can change, but I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm really excited that I literally didn't spend any money to do this except for, for my whole punch, which I think was like $12. So I... I'm feeling really good about it. I'm glad I didn't spend like a hundred and something dollars on a folio. I want to just test this out first and see how it goes. And then if it goes well, it might be something where I do invest in a nicer set of rings and uh, like a nicer folio because like I mentioned, this is maybe not going to last very long. So anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions at all about any of these things or any suggestions, if you are an A5 ring planner, please feel free to leave a comment below, or you can always find me on Instagram and send me a message on there if you'd prefer. Um, but again, thank you so much for tuning in and I will talk to you later. Bye.